All his life, Monty has applied his violent-free concepts not only in his work with horses, but with people, too. He transfers the knowledge that he has learned from prey animals onto the behavior of people. This started out with 47 foster children that he has raised beside his three biological children together with his wife, Pat. Today, he is working with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder patients, mostly veterans from Afghanistan and Iraq, to help them heal. He shows managers and leaders of Fortune 500 companies how, and nonprofit organizations how to better cooperate with their associates. And not to forget, he is teaching his horse training students of Join Up International all around the world. Monty Roberts' goal is to leave the world a better place for horses and for people too. I welcome him for his speech and a discussion round to which I invite you to participate actively. Hi, Monty, can you hear me? I can hear you. And can, can you, you hear see me? me? <laughs> I can see you too. Great, then I, I, will, I will turn the computer around and then you can start. Okay. Yes? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, I don't know if all of you have seen yourselves on Skype before, but uh, it's awful, isn't it? And uh, I, I asked my daughter to find a picture of George Clooney and put it up here so that uh, I could speak through the picture of George Clooney and then you would like me better. But she, she, she couldn't find that picture of George Clooney. So you're just going to have to put up with me. And I say good evening to you and that I wish to thank the members of the IAC responsible for inviting me to speak with the students and graduates present today. It has been an opportunity for me to accomplish something that I've recently decided must be done. At this stage in my life, it is important for me to make sure that I am living by the concepts that I have found to be successful in a psychological approach to communicating and influencing individuals important in my life. Decades ago, while dealing with a very well-known psychiatrist, I was introduced to a psychological concept called PICNIC, P-I-C-N-I-C. -I -I Those letters stand for positive instant consequences and negative instant consequences. They are extremely important in the world of human beings for raising children, dealing with family matters, and getting along with others in the workplace. Don't kid yourself. I am a horse trainer who was given the chance to take advantage of educational opportunities. I was the victim of physical abuse throughout my childhood. Horrible abuse. Circumstances were such that I had horses as friends and teachers as well. They were animate objects with a heart and a brain. I found that the horses learned through instinct, observation, and repetition. As I worked with the horses, I realized that virtually all of the human being individuals I observed used the same techniques on their horses that were used on me as a child. And this took place for 6,000 years without appreciable change. Something within me spoke loudly that these cooperative, nonviolent, wonderful animals could be better dealt with through nonviolent techniques than those that were in use at that time in our history. 
Man has been dealing with flight animals for about 6,000 years since domestication. And please, uh, for this moment, let me ask all students to set aside any knowledge they have of horses and realize that we will be using equus as a metaphor for human to human relationships. It is essential to understand that most children are flight animals too. It is also true that a huge percentage of the females of the human species tend to live on the flight side of our psychology. Flight animals, like our human female, would hope for a life without violence. They tend to be nurturers and would prefer to communicate and negotiate instead of employing confrontational principles. Violence worked for the horses for so many decades, so many centuries. And virtually every champion was created through training in abject violence. But please, one must remember that each of these horses only had to perform and be compared with others treated in the same way. It seemed no one was willing to give nonviolence a chance. As an abused child, something clicked inside of me to move me closer to the side of the horses. It's like I almost became a horse. It was then that I decided to study their behavior and to extend that I could determine to the extent that I could determine how to mold their relationships to humans so that there was a, the creation of a desire to complete their efforts because they wanted to, not because they were forced to. The wild horses of the Western United States were the perfect volunteers for the studies I needed to complete. Mind you, I didn't know I needed to complete these studies. It was inside of me somewhere because of my childhood abuse. It was the encouragement of a primary school teacher that I stayed the course through the years of constant effort to improve my skills in this area. With two doctorates in behavioral sciences now, I still had professors while in university that simply couldn't understand where I was going with these concepts. Since my first book, however, there has been a global shift away from violence in the training of flight animals and people too. My work with corporate families has proven to produce improved performances based upon a trust-based relationship. Please think of employees as the horses or the children. The similarities are enormous. When a teacher can produce an environment in which the student learns, that's called intrinsic, instead of, instead of the philosophy is taught, that's extrinsic. Learning is, acceler learning is accelerated by multiples. There's no such thing as teaching, only learning. The student's brain has to pull it in. The same is true for the production of employees. Over the past 30 years, I've worked with more than 800 corporations, and many stated that it assisted in their performances greatly. In spite of the recent problems of Volkswagen North America, they still lead the list of endorsers of the improvements I made in working with Clive Warlow then CEO at the time that I worked with Volkswagen. Words have recently come to me that clearly characterize my work in the field of behavioral sciences. I only thought of these words last week. Passion without compassion equals pure greed. Pure greed does not allow reward to benefit all involved. 
to create for self-benefit only will never benefit mankind. To benefit mankind is to achieve life's most gratifying outcome. You can believe me when I tell you, at 80 years of age, the most gratification I have now is producing people who think in a nonviolent way. Recently, I spoke to a board member of mine in our foundation. He's a retired airline captain and flew over the Atlantic back and forth for about 25 years. After hearing me speak on some subject or another, he said it moved him to ask me this question. What does a pilot do if there's a catastrophe on his airplane? I couldn't answer him. Then he responded, he keeps on flying. Really? Yeah, think about that. This man realizes that he has hundreds of lives on his hands. He knows that no form of chaos or active force will improve the situation. He thinks his way right through to the ground if necessary, attempting to maximize the potential for success and minimize the potential for disaster. Many corporate executives will begin to shout, dismiss people, or act forcefully when there is a catastrophe on the horizon. It is the cool executive who quietly thinks things through, takes advice, and processes all available information to mitigate the challenges he or she faces, who will likely succeed in this effort. It's the quiet person, the contemplative person, that will succeed in the corporate families of the globe. Conversely, it is likely to be the employee who utilizes the nonviolent approach that is most likely to rise to the position of CEO at some point in their future. The employee may choose to leave the violent environment seeking more fertile ground for planting the seeds of communication and negotiation so that eventual success is more likely. One will often meet employees who have moved repeatedly from one company to another, stating that they just couldn't stand to work with the people they were with. They might tell you that they were driven to anger on many occasions because of the ineptitude of the individuals that they were asked to work with. One needs to take a breath, sit back, and study the experience of, of this employee to be sure that they were justified. It is possible that they were just unlucky. Could be. But often, they have been the problem instead of those employees who they would blame. I meet many corporate executives who cry out that how difficult it is to get good people to work on the jobs required. It would be difficult for you to believe the fact that enormous percentage of these executives are in fact creating the employees who they can't tolerate. They do this by utilizing techniques that are demanding and forceful and consistently forget the positive instant consequences, the congratulations they might give, but tend to always remember to give the ne negative instant consequences, forgetting the positive. That will create an employee who is untenable and generally will move on. Those of you who intend to work strictly in the world of human beings will be happy to note that through the use of human languages, one can communicate the positives and the negatives with clearly understandable words. One should remember that it is always preferable to clearly delineate what is positive and what is negative so that there is a bilateral agreement before there is an outcome. 
clearly people need to know what it is that is expected from them. In my world, I discovered that the language Equus was available to me in 1942. I was seven years old when I discovered the language that is silent and conducted much like humans communicate with others that are deaf. In other words, sign language. Horses needed to be silent in the wild so as not to call on the predators that might do them in. In these areas where they lived, there were plenty of predators. The world came down on me. My father rejected my statements and beat me for it, saying that I was possessed by the devil. That was about 73 years ago uh, when these theories I have on Equus, the language, are still being widely accepted globally now. But in those early years, they were rejected repeatedly and forcefully. There are still many critics out there who would indicate that my concepts on human horse communication are unbelievable and not true. It is true, however, that the World Book Encyclopedia and Britannica too are moving to agree with my theories on this subject. All this in mind, I will never live to see the day when we can, on the moment, explain to a horse what is positive and what is negative, in words, that is. Because of the language difficulties, we must do this through repetitive acts that yield positive consequences for positive actions and negative consequences for negative actions without violence. It is amazing how quickly horses will choose to consider the positive. Sometimes I feel like they're faster than we humans, even though we have the words to work with. Once again, let me thank you for the opportunity of speaking with you today and uh, inviting you to follow me, please, on the social media if you're interested in the work that we are doing with horses and humans, including people who are afflicted with post-traumatic stress due to military engagements or as, a first, as first responders in fire and police, we do those too. We also work with prisons, youth detention centers, and domestic abuse centers. The mission I'm on constitutes one of the most gratifying experiences that I've identified in my life and even over the world population, both animal and human. You should know that my life's goal is to leave the world a better place than I found it for horses and for people too. You also should know that violence is virtually never the answer. Violence is for the violator and not for the victim. No one of us was born with the right to say, you must or I'll hurt you, to any other creature, animal or human. So my name is Eskil Blunk. I'm I'm saying I'm talking on behalf of the whole organizing team, uh, namely Dima Ernst, uh, Jutta Schnell and all the coordinators here, to give you a very warm thank you for all your contribution here. It felt like you were here in the room directly in Nottingham, <laughs> which was our original plan, but it's amazing what modern technology and the support of Annalena is making happening to make you come here even without you have to travel that time of the year. Thank you so much. It gave us a lot of hope because it's our business to work in education and uh, it gives us uh, motivation to continue on. I think all of us being involved in that. Thank you so much for all your message today. Thank, thank you for having me. 
and um, realize that we would love to have communication from you as individuals and Annalena can give you uh, email addresses and that sort of thing so that you can come through and be a part of our family of almost 400,000 now friends on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you so much, Monty, and also a big thank you to Debbie, who is sitting next to you. Debbie is Monty's daughter, and she uh, set up the technical part in California for us, so thank you. I wanted you to tell them that I set up the technical part. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> they would never believe it. You too, Annalena. Um, my love to everybody there. Bye.